For almost a year now, I have been working really hard in tackling tires on my dirt bike, on my KTM 150 XCW. I call them the rainbow tires. They remind me a lot of rainbow rails. Again, going back to my snowboard self, my favorite feature to hit in parks were rainbow rails, rainbow boxes. So I have a love for the rainbow tire and that is why. Big goal of mine was to get over the tires smoothly, consistently, without dabbing my feet, of course, onto the tires. So without dabbing, I wanted to get used to hitting these tires. And once I build my confidence, once I build up my skills, I want to learn so much more on these bad boys. But let's break it down on how I got started, the lessons I learned, and the skills that took me to get to this place of riding through on these tires. And hey, hi, hello, I am Angelisa, and I am by no means a professional dirt bike rider. I am just here to share my experiences, my stories, and my lessons with you as I would call myself a beginner dirt bike rider. Here are three steps that I took while tackling the big rainbow tire obstacle on my KTM 150 XCW. Let's go. All right, the first step is courage. You want the courage to tackle these types of obstacles. To give you some context, over a year ago, we went to Bear Creek OHV, which is a campground located in West Kelowna. And their Enduro Park is located in the main area of the campground. And at the time, I felt like the park was huge. All the obstacles were massive. And I saw the set of rainbow tires and I just knew I wanted to try them. So after a few days of big trail rides, I came back to the campground and I was still in my gear. I was still head to toe in my jersey, my knee braces, my pants. I had my hydro pack, I had my chest protector, elbow, all the all the gear. I still had it on and I said to Kenny, my husband, I'm ready. I'm ready to go hit those tires. Will you come with me? It was now or never. I knew that I had to take action when I had the courage. What I did was I asked for help. I asked my husband Kenny to come and also one of our buddies Wes came as well. At the time my husband was injured he did something to his ribs so he felt that we needed somebody else to come and spot me just in case so no one else wanted to come which is fair we all did huge days of riding that day so it was just me it was just me going into that park and let me tell you i was very 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 scared these tires when you walk in person now they've changed things up at bear creek uh, this year, but I mean those tires are still there. They're massive. They're way bigger than these tires here They're probably my height, which is like five feet <laughs> So if you've ever been to Bear Creek campground uh, the dirt bike campground You will know if you've seen or walked through the enduro park You'll know what I mean when I say they are massive. They're very scary and intimidating Especially when you look at them, let alone when you approach it with a dirt bike so let me tell you a little bit about the tires. Okay, so the in-run was little to next to nothing. <laughs> there wasn't much of an in-run at all. You had to approach it with a bend to the tires. So you didn't have a straight in-line going up the tires. And there was no dirt that went up the tires, which was another obstacle. You really had to rely on that clutch pop to get you up and over those tires. And after the tires was a rock garden pit. There was only about like, I don't know, five feet of ground after you landed those tires and immediately there was a rock pit. So you had to really pick and choose which direction you wanted to go after those tires. So you had to plan your in run, which way you were gonna hit your tire and which way you're gonna exit out of those tires. So if you didn't play your cards right, you could easily end up into another obstacle. So you either have to be prepared for it 
or really know how to stop before it if things got out of control. And let's just say the rock garden was not an easy rock garden either. You had a berm up to the tires about a couple feet until the tires and then after the tires there was a rock garden or you could have gone left and avoided the rock garden. So after scouting the in-run, the landing, the obstacle itself, analyzing how I was gonna get on top of these tires and any other obstacles that I was gonna face, I decided that day that my only goal was just to get on top of the tires. I didn't want to put too much pressure on myself as this was one of the biggest obstacles I have ever done. I just, want, I just knew that I wanted to get on top of those tires and figure out my line as I go down. All right, so let's recap. One, gain enough courage. Even if it's just a little bit and you're scared, do it anyway. Gain the courage, make sure you have the gear, you're in your gear, and you ask for help, okay? That's a huge one. Ask for help, ask for a spotter. Um, our buddy Wes stood beside me and helped me catch my bike or lift up my bike. <laughs> there were times where I was just hanging off my bike, right? And he helped uh, grab that bike for me while it was still like up on the tire and I was sliding off. So ask for help, please, please, please. That's like probably if you're gonna take away anything out of this video is just ask for help, ask for a spotter. And most people are willing to help you achieve those goals too, right? So don't be afraid to ask. The next point to check out the obstacle, to walk through it, check out your in run. What are the obstacles going into the obstacle? What requires to get on top of the obstacle? And then the landing. You wanna make sure that the landing is either smooth, which direction you need to go, um, that sort of thing. So checking over the obstacles, analyzing what you need to do and how you can do it. Don't overthink this though. That's my, uh, you know, tidbit is you don't want to walk through it too many times. You don't want to overthink it. Sometimes we can get into our head and be discouraged to even try the obstacle when there's just too many things going on. I did not get the tires the first try. Um, if anything, it took me about six times just to get on top of that tire. So there was a lot of fails going into it, but that's the thing with me is I have to learn by trial and error. Just know that uh, there's gonna be some fails and that it might take you more than once to get on top of that obstacle. And there's no shame in the game. What matters most is that you are confident enough to be brave at trying something new. And the only way for us to gain that confidence is by doing something that we're so afraid of, something that scares us. Once we tackle those fears, then we are proving ourselves that we can do hard things. My permission slip is allowing yourself to be bad at something and allowing yourself to be a beginner at something new and to keep trying over and over and over again. That's the key to confidence is just knowing that you can put yourself through hard things, that you can trust your skills. And the only way by getting better is by doing it more. And just remember that nobody ever starts as an expert. Everyone starts somewhere. Everyone starts as a beginner. And this is your, once again, permission slip to be that beginner, to be okay with starting something new. It takes a lot of patience, skills learned, and a whole lot of trial and error in order for us to gain the confidence to do obstacles. Practice, patience, and seat time. <laughs> Now, for most of you, you might not have the opportunity to hit Rambo tires like I do. I have my own personal track, and that was something that I really wanted was these rock truck tires so that I can practice those skills. But perhaps you have a trail system 
networking near your area and they have an enduro park and maybe they have a concrete pipe or maybe they have some other form of tires or logs. It's kind of the same approach, right? All obstacles, once you learn how to hit them, you can really transfer skills and abilities onto other obstacles. So just remember that when you do have the opportunity to hit rainbow tires, that it's gonna take time and it's gonna take a whole lot of patience. It's not an overnight success. Give yourself time and focus on that specific drill when it comes to the rainbow tire obstacle. Hit it over and over and over again. And if you can, film yourself. That is a great way to learn on some of the errors that you're making and it's a quick responsive way of correcting yourself if you don't have somebody there to help you out film yourself and learn as you go and if you have other riders around you ask for help ask for their advice everyone is always willing to give any type of advice and all you have to do is just practice and that brings me to my last point is you got to make sure that you're having fun while doing these obstacles. If you're not having fun, then try something else. Go for a trail ride. Don't put the pressure on yourself to be good at these obstacles. It's all about being a beginner and being okay with it and learning as you go. Because again, if you're getting information from a whole bunch of riders around you, what you have to do is take bits of information and just really try what works for you. As mentioned before, I had the opportunity of building my own enduro park track. And if you're interested in the obstacles that I have built, you can check out the video over here somewhere on the screen. Um, check out all of the new features that I put into my track. And until our next hangout, keep killing it safely, be the vibe, and I will talk to you very soon. Bye guys.